Good evening. Uh, we're in for a treat tonight. We're all going to go on an adventure together, a very wonderful adventure. And I just talked to Frances. She was telling me about the clip that you viewed today that I talked about in the morning session. And as I was saying, forgiveness is, is a great gift. It's, it's a gift of looking at the world in another way and it's a privilege of the forgiven to forgive. So I was mentioning that clip in, in more of the category of uh, like more of an extre extreme forgiveness lesson. But again, remember the first principle in A Course in Miracles is that there is no order of difficulty in miracles. And so it's powerful to show a clip like that because it gives you a glimpse of how, how far you can go to overlook the world and actually to open your mind to Christ vision, which is really the aim of, of the workbook. All of those lessons I am determined to see, above all else I am determined to see. He's not referring to the body's eyes. He's not referring to the five senses, he's referring to the vision of Christ, to spiritual vision. And that's really the purpose of forgiveness, is to take your mind into the realm of spiritual vision, where you can truly see everything we believed about the world, including the five senses. It's all, the five senses are in cahoots with the ego. The ego made the body and the ego made the senses and so Jesus says, tells us the body's eyes cannot see and the body's ears cannot hear. Talk about a projection and how convincing. You might have seen the movie The Matrix when uh, they're kind of working on Neo uh, after they've just got him <laughs> out of the matrix for uh, in his rehab project and he's laying there on the table they've been operating on his body and he said why do my eyes hurt and he's told you've never used them <laughs> and why does why do we ever experience any hurt it's like our workbook lesson of the day for those of you that are doing it one for every day of the year, I can be hurt by nothing but my thoughts. It's this sense of ego thoughts that is where the hurt comes in, the pain comes in. God is not an abandoning God. God is not a betraying God. Even though we have had songs over the centuries, you know, when the one who left us here returns for us at last. It's not painting a really good picture <laughs> of God, the one who left us here. <laughs> but I do like that song. Come on people now, smile on your brothers, everybody get together, try to love one another right now. God has not left his thoughts. Ideas leave not their source. Christ is still a perfect idea in the mind of God. And so this idea of separation and abandonment and betrayal, all of these are emotions that are generated from the belief in separation from God. But they don't come from God. God is pure love. And so when we go through this forgiveness process, like in the clip you saw today, it's truly forgiveness is a gift to ourself. We're freeing our own mind by forgiving. We're not letting anybody off the hook except our mind <laughs> that believed in the ego. We're going to let that mind off the hook, <laughs> but not any body. We're not here to forgive bodies as if they're outside of us. So... We're going to make a transition because I think that clip today, it really stirs something deep, deep inside. And what I think it's really stirring is it's, it's stirring our calling. 
We have been called by God to the most holy function there could be. And the really the only issue is will I say yes or not? And even though the Bible talked about the chosen ones, actually Jesus reinterprets that line to say all are called, few choose to listen. So really, in this first generation of Course in Miracles students, we'll say, <laughs> and there are thousands, thousands and thousands, it's like really the question comes down in our hearts to, am I going to be among the few, seemingly, it's all just a matter of time, everyone awakens, but all are called, few choose to listen, and yet everyone will awaken and everyone will answer the call. That is a guarantee. And, and by answering the call, by saying yes to the calling, you are inviting happiness, you are inviting the experience of happiness, because the calling is your function. The calling is, the Course calls it your special function. It will involve special skills, abilities, things that you developed in an egoic time frame, but you just simply say, oh, all those skills and abilities, here you go. Take them. You use them for the great awakening. You use them for the entire universe, for the whole sonship. I give them all to you. I give it all over to you. You orchestrate time and space for me and you use any abilities I seem to to have at my disposal. You use them for the glory of God. And that's really what it means also in the workbook lesson. My happiness and my function are one. He's given us a direct clue that our happiness and fulfilling our function are the same. And how different that is from the ego's picture of happiness. Oh, I'll be happy when I retire. I'll be happy when I have more free time to do the things I want to do. I'll be happy when my children are grown and have moved on and I have my house back. I'll be, I'll be happy, you know, I mean, there's just all kinds of, a whole menagerie of ideas that the ego has in there like, well, maybe you're not so happy now, but it's going to get better. And when you reach this certain outcome in the world, it will get better. You will be happy. Almost like you've got to keep reaching for the cheese and the ego keeps moving the cheese and moving the cheese. You can never quite get your fingers on the cheese, but you tell yourself, someday, I'm going to get that cheese. I'm going to reach that point where I'm happy. In the immediacy of salvation section, Jesus actually comes out right out and says, Be not content with future happiness, for it is not your just reward. For you have cause for freedom now. He is even dispelling future happiness. He doesn't even mince words. He's saying, nope, that's another trick. Future happiness. And beware of the voice that's talking about that future happiness too because it's got its own scheme, its own plan for you on time and space to reach for the carrot, but the carrot moves. You reach for the cheese, the cheese always moves. You're always reaching for something that you can't ever get. And of course, the ego designed this world to be that way. So that you would forever seek and do not find is the ego's, is the ego's theme. If it, if it had a TV show and a theme song, that would be the theme song. Seek and do not find. With a little jingle. Try to make it peppy. It's not peppy. It's a death wish. You can't make a death wish peppy. You know, it, it just is not good news for your state of mind. So, this movie we're going to transition to, I think this is great coming on the heels of that, that clip this afternoon because this movie is going to be all about answering the call, all about saying yes to your special function, all about letting the spirit orchestrate time and space to bring happiness to you and to all the world. In fact, 
Jesus says, in you is everything that is perfect, ready, ready to radiate through you and out into the world. Wow. Now that still implies that there's an external world, but you see, he gives us these nice metaphors, because doesn't that sound good? If you believe you're a body, and, and everything within you is perfect, ready to radiate through you and out into the world, it means just that you'll be activated. You don't have to necessarily sit in your living room for decades in a lotus position. Jesus likes active workers that are inspired by the Holy Spirit to laugh and shine and hug and, and bring comfort and blessing and bring the light wherever you seem to go. And ultimately that perfection in you is everything that's perfect. That's the light within you and ready to radiate through you just means it wants to extend. There's another great line from Jesus in the Course that says, the ego cannot prevent God from shining on you, but it can prevent God from shining through you. Isn't that an interesting line? The ego cannot prevent God from shining on you, but it can prevent God from shining through you. But the second part is how we remember that we are the light of the world. By letting the light radiate through us, shine through us, to be used. Remember St. Francis, Lord, make me an instrument. You know, that's the same kind of feeling where you want to be activated and used. Another thing is, Holy Spirit only sees one function for the body. Only one. The ego has many, 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 many separate functions for the body. And it's all these separate functions that the ego has made up for the body. It made up the body and now it makes up functions for the body. And all of those functions are meant to glorify the ego and to reinforce the ego as your identity. That's what all those functions were made. And the Holy Spirit only has one function for the body, just one, and that's communication device, just communication. So when we say, in you is everything that's perfect, ready to radiate through you and out into the world, it's really you being used as a communication, the body being used as a communication device. I mean, if you allow your smartphone to be a communication device for you, why not just let the body be like the smartphone? You know? Just turn it over. Just give it over and say, I give it to you to use for your purposes because I know it will bring me happiness and joy. It's reminding me right now I better be in airplane mode or... <laughs> that, could be, that could be an interesting thing that comes on there. There you go. You, now I lay you down to sleep. Uh, another thing that... Here we are at the Into the Kingdom retreat and, and Jesus says, In you is all of heaven. Every leaf that falls will live again in you. Every bird that ever sang will sing again in you. And every flower that has ever bloomed has saved all of its perfume and its loveliness for you. Wow! This kingdom of heaven is so exquisitely beautiful and, and all it's doing is, is waiting for us to say yes. Waiting for us to say yes. It says in the Course that, that when God created Christ, that there was an acknowledgement by Christ in this eternal creation. In other words, Christ acknowledged the perfection of the, correct, of the creation and said, yes, thank you, I accept. And so, even in heaven, and us being the perfect Christ idea, we said yes to our perfect creation as a pure, perfect, pure love. 
And now, in terms of the sleeping mind, guess what we have to say when the Holy Spirit calls and says, will you help me do my work? We have to respond again like we did in heaven in the affirmative. That's a big yes. We need to say yes to the calling. So tonight's movie is really good for that because it, it is a good example of the point I was making on the first night that I was saying for Francis and for myself, both of us, uh, it, the Spirit had to reach us in some kind of um, striking way because neither of us growing up, the little Francis and the little David, were not, you know, saying our prayers somewhere in the corner saying, you know, I want to be used to uh, heal the world and heal my mind. You know, we, we had to be reached in some way that was striking, that really got our attention. And, and both of us had those kind of experiences. For me, it was revelatory experiences, mystical experiences. Frances heard a very loud voice in, in her mind that was like the whole universe was speaking to her. We, the spirit really had to get our attention. And in tonight's movie, the main character... He's going to be getting his calling. And it's going to be surprising to him. It's going to be startling to him. He's going to react with just disbelief. Like, what? Is this a joke? I mean, absolute disbelief. But th I'm telling you, this is exactly how the Holy Spirit will call you. You know, the ego is going to react to the calling with, what? Are you kidding me? It's going to, it's going to be striking. He, he simply is going to react, even if he has some beautiful witnesses and symbols around him that are kind of nudging him toward his calling, that are trying to nurture him in a way towards his calling, it's going to be so striking that at first he's going to be in disbelief. And I think that's something that I love about this movie is because for a lot of us, we can relate to that. You know, we start reading the Course and it's like, is this sand? What I think it's sand? Is this, does this, does he mean this? Do, who are you talking to here? To, to me? You're talking to me? In these lessons, you're talking to me? You know, it's, there's a bit of a, a disbelief, uh, like being called in, in this way to such a holy function, because none of us had really considered that much. You know, it just kind of, it sweeps us off our feet. It kind of comes at us. And it has to do that because... That's the way we're going to develop the faith. It's as if, just like in the, the Matrix movie, where the, the cell phone goes off, and Neo answers the phone, and he goes, Hello? And, and it's Morpheus. And Morpheus says to him, I can guide you, but you must do exactly as I say. We're, that's why we're afraid of the calling. We're afraid if we answer the phone, if we, <laughs> if we answer the call, it's like, what is this going to cost me? What's this going to do to my earthly life? What is this going to do to my future? <sighs> my parents never told me about this one. I was not expecting this call. But the call is coming. And the main character, you know, is going to be called. And the call will be your special function. It will use some of the skills and abilities that you already have because that's just the way God works. God doesn't call you and say, now I'm going to have to train you in all kinds of new skills and abilities. No, the Holy Spirit's very good at using your existing egoic skills and abilities for a higher purpose to unify all your abilities and take you into the unified field, into unified awareness. That's the Holy Spirit's job. But when the call comes, then the hesitation that is felt is this 
sometimes it's an embarrassment. It can be like, oh my God, are you kidding me? Oh my gosh, I didn't expect this. It, it can be some form of fear. And that fear can basically, is, it's related to the fear of loss. Loss of a separate self and a separate world. And Jesus tells us, you're not really afraid of the means. You're afraid of the end. Intuitively, you know where this is leading. It's leading back to heaven. And the real fear is, is not necessarily even the means that are given. It's like where they're pointing is the scary part. That's why people resist the call. That's why people resist guidance. Jesus says in the Course, there are many answers you have received but have not heard. Ooh, there must be some resistance going on. If I've received all the answers already and I'm only hearing a small number, <laughs> it's because I must not want to hear the rest. But they're there. They're ready to download and to be implemented at any moment that we say yes. So, so the main character tonight is, is going to be given kind of in kind of a, an out of pattern experience, unexpected. He's going to receive a calling. He will, he will doubt his calling. Uh, he will resist his calling a bit, but in the end, miracles cannot be performed where there is fear or doubt. That's what it means that God can be blocked, prevented by the ego of shining through you. That miracles require your willingness. It doesn't mean that you have to be perfect before you can receive miracles, because there would be no need for miracles <laughs> If you already knew your own perfection, you wouldn't even need miracles. But it does mean that temporarily you have to reach a state where you can still your mind and come into alignment with God and Jesus and the Holy Spirit and say, Here I am, Lord. I'm ready. In fact, I really am just relying on you to perform the miracle. I'm just ready to be a witness for the miracle. Miracles are performed through us because we are ready, because we are willing. We don't have to be perfect, but we do have to come to a place of willingness where we even temporarily lay aside the fear so that the miracle, the light can shoot through. And then every time we do that, it strengthens our awareness of the light. And then as our main character gets into his calling, using his singing ability and his uh, musical ability uh, with keyboard and guitar. When he starts to let the backdrop of the music and the song be used by the Spirit, it's going to set off a rapid transformation and he's going to also have to face more obstacles and more temptations because we know in this world when things start to take off the ego is running right along the side wanting to tempt the mind into fame and fortune, personal recognition. You know, the ego is going to run right along and try to hook the mind back in any way that it can. And he's going to have to face those things too. So in one sense I consider tonight's movie as a beautiful metaphor for, for unexpectedly receiving your calling, resisting, saying yes, facing trials and temptations, and then ultimately having kind of a real beautiful heart opening experience that comes from following and saying yes. Ultimately that's what leads to the, the happiness. So that's the adventure we're going on to. And I may pause it uh, during the movie if there's some point that really comes to me strong or if I hear somebody squeal or something in the audience. <laughs> I, 
I know something's going on. If I hear a big squeal in the middle of a scene, I'm going to, st- I'll say, stop it, stop the movie. We got a squealer. I could even bring an extra seat up here and we could dive into the squeal together for everybody. But we're just going to go into this and have some fun and really take it in because after that clip this afternoon, we're really ready to get, let's get going with this calling. Let's, let's show me the witnesses to dive in to say, say yes. So are we queued up? Ready? Okay. Let's roll it. Okay. You know, I hope you're relating to this. When you have something inside you that's so dear and so precious and you want to extend it to those around you and they, they don't seem that interested. <laughs> Can any of you relate to this? I can relate to this so much because when I first started going to, reading the course and going to course groups, when I would go to visit my parents, it was very much like when he went to play Let It Be. (laughs) I'm so excited, I'm like, there's miracles and it's Jesus! And (laughs) I'm so bowled over by this, oh my gosh, it's the most amazing thing. And, And then eventually my mother said, I think you need to find other people to share this with. (laughs) And then I paused and I thought, I think that's the Holy Spirit speaking to me right through my mom. (laughs) So I'm happy that I listened to that (laughs) and didn't stay in their living room (laughs) talking about this. But, you know, you can really relate. There's something really important that Jack has inside him and he's so joyful and excited about it, but he doesn't seem to have an audience, but now he's got his uh, his first opportunity to share it and record it. And so this is very parallel to getting your inner calling and and having a very very much of a spark with it, but uh, this will launch you after you first start to feel that calling, then the next lesson that comes very quickly is Jesus and the Holy Spirit saying that that Jesus is saying, I must direct where to bestow the miracles. Miracles are not to be given out indiscriminately. There be, it's very precise who you're to meet, what you're to say, if you're to say anything. Sometimes you're just to smile, offer a hug or a pat on the back. That's the most that can be given and received at that moment. And so the very beginning, the the excitement and the enthusiasm and the joy of what you start to feel on the inside has to also be given over to the Spirit, to Jesus, and say, now you're going to have to direct me. You're going to have to really show me where I'm to extend. And that sends you immediately into the need for that connection of that guidance. That Jesus is basically saying, you don't have to worry about your readiness, but I'm ready, and if you're willing, I'll do it through you, but I must direct you exactly in this miracle working. If you try to perform miracles indiscriminately or without my guidance, you will get mixed reflections back. Because when you try to extend where they're not meant to be extended, it's not going to be a a pretty reflection. You probably get more of a bug off uh, than anything else. And so this is very much what he's doing here. And he's got all this encouragement and this nurturing around him. But he's just at the very beginning stages of having something within himself that he feels strongly about and he knows that he's to extend the gift that's been given him, even though it's been given him very unexpectedly. He has to really be tuned in, and he has to, more than that, he has to be patient to let the Spirit go before him and not try to lead the way himself personally. Okay. Now that I know 
Okay. <laughs> wow. Okay, you turn around, there's dancing going on in the back. It's a party. It's a party. Wow. That one really hits home. You notice how too he, he had it all in him, in his heart. He had all that music in him and he just had to let it come through. And it's funny, the only time he got that guilty look in his face is when he took it personal. He, he didn't remember that it was coming from the source and he was just the messenger, he was just the instrument delivering it. But when he took it personal, then he felt guilty. He felt afraid. He thought he might get arrested. <laughs> he, thought, he thought he'd done something, stolen something. But what's so beautiful is that we all have this music of love written on our hearts and it wants to come out. It needs to come out to the world. It needs to come through us. We didn't write it. And the more you get into your function, you realize that even the words you speak and even what comes through is not coming from you personally. It's just love. It's just the kingdom reaching the kingdom. It's just love looking upon itself. It wants to be known. God wants to be known. That's what revelation is, to reveal. Love wants to reveal itself. But just like Jack, we have to be willing to let it come through. Even when it seems strange, even when it seems awkward, even when we're embarrassed, even when we, we have our doubts, this love is so strong and it needs to be expressed. And look at John Lennon, you know, <laughs> lived to be 78 in this parallel universe, and Jack goes, wow, you made it to 78. <laughs> <laughs> Which is so beautiful because, you know, John had a message to deliver and, and he delivered his message. Have you had a happy life? Yes, very. Was it, but not successful? He said, I said, it was a happy life. <laughs> That's it. That's the success. So, I think if any of you want to come into the front seats, I would just like to hear if this movie touched you in some way, if you feel touched and you have something right now that you'd like to share with all of us, uh, please come down and we'll get a microphone here for you and you can just share your blessing, share what, what the Spirit has to say through you with this profound movie. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Hi again. I, I, um, uh, something in the movie, I like the movie very much. It was something that hurts me very, very much. And it was the moment when, uh, when, he, when he said his love to his, to his girlfriend and then the other boy was standing behind. And that, that, oh, that was, a remember, I have had many, many times in my life and that... I want to oh, oh, slowly. Hi, slowly. <laughs> that hurts me. I know not hurts. That took me. Yeah, I know now. Now I know. But there was pain in my life, yeah. left behind by the beautiful girls. Poo. Yeah. That belief that somehow there's a winner and a uh -huh. loser. <laughs> we have the Beatles, and then we have the. The Swedish group Ebba. The winner takes it all. <laughs> the loser has to fall. <laughs> yeah, but there was a lot of pain for uh, for, yeah. for the person. Yeah. Yeah. For the small person. Yeah. And then when you see at the end, you know, he's he's there. That guy starts confessing, yeah, yeah, yeah. and I'm then the woman is standing right there that has had eyes for him all yeah, along. Yeah, I saw it. Yeah, that was good. You see <laughs> how we, it all comes around, yeah, you know, yeah. like it's all part of a divine destiny, but yeah. it was a good rinser. That really, it, that pain has to come up. So, 
you know, with this movie that's great. If you watch a movie and all of a sudden uh, yeah. you feel that, then it's helping release that unconscious, there's that dark unconscious thought of loss, yeah. rearing his head again, just again to be handed over. Yeah. And so that's the blessing. I've got, it's never too late, so now I can do it now, eh? <laughs> That's I, it. Oh man, I, I, I became so tough and oh, phew, so cold. Yeah. 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 Thank you, David. Beautiful. Yeah, Thank yeah. you. Thank you for sharing yeah. that. It's a healing. Whew. Well, um, yeah, I don't know where to, what to say, really. Um, my heart is pounding. It's... It really speaks to me because I've music is a thing that I've always wanted to express, and it's kind of this really interesting way of illustrating all of this. And once again, at at one of these retreats, is just um, being shown that there's there's nothing but permission to express. And he had this thing to express, and I'm like, oh my god, this is my story in this bizarre kind of way of showing it, and um, the way that ego. Um, his manager and everyone around him is is contradicting, and he's contradicting himself. There's just so many layers to it. But um, for me personally, it's um, showing me that that there's nothing to be afraid of, and that I'm hiding a gift that I, I know needs to come out. And I'm the only one not. I'm. The, I'm. I need to say yes. And I say yes, and then I say no, and then I say yes, and then I say no. Um, my whole life, I felt, um, I felt this gift, and it's so joyful, and it's caused so much pain to not fulfill that purpose. And I've tried in different ways, and there's been roadblocks with different people and different situations, and I've always thought, well, there's a reason why those things haven't worked out. I haven't found the right situation yet. It just hasn't been orchestrated in a way that made sense. Um, but I can feel it is being orchestrated and it's right there in front of me. And so I feel a lot of joy and, and um, just really tired of giving in to fear. And um, that's why I was inspired to come here to the Netherlands to, um, to break out of the sphere of expressing myself with my voice. And I'm just so thrilled that you showed this movie. And I'm just so joyful. And I just want the peace. I want the joy of expression. I don't want to live behind this veil of fear anymore. So this is a really joyful, funny way to help me see very clearly that... Um, that there's nothing to be afraid of, and um, the world suffers when, when I hold this back. And I've been told that before, and this is just another big, big push for me to push forward. And what you said about it not being personal is huge because it feels so personal and so threatening for me to expose. It feels like a, an exposure that's very dangerous and threatening. And this is helping me just to break right through all that. So thank you. Oh, How lovely. Thank you. Thank I'm you for so, sharing so, that. so blessed. Ah! <laughs> Beautiful. Beautiful. <laughs> yeah. And did you notice in the movie too about how the, the the whole thing about his manager wanting to shape his image and and like tear it tear it down and then shape it up, all for the purpose of fame and fortune and everything and in the end how he had to chuck it all. He had to get up there and he had to let it all go and that's like it progressively takes us along to let the confidence grow in us but then to really let it rinse us from this idea that we're personally doing anything positively or negatively you know and so I'm glad you really got that. You really were touched by that. Thank you. Thank you. Um, what to say about this? Um, last few months, I don't watch much television because um, I am withdrawing in myself because I have some medical problems. And the day before I went to this retreat, I was sipping television. I don't know why, <clears throat> around the eating time, so I had my food on the table alone. 
and I was tapping on Kennel 192. That's the pop uh, kennel of the 60s, 70s music. And there was the top 40 of only the Beatles. Only the Beatles songs. I said, oh, I got tears in my eyes. You know, all two hours the Beatles. Wow. So I got my CDs from my, from my records and, and I put them in my car and I was so happy to be here. All the way here I was crying from happiness. And then I said, it's the Beatles here again. Why? <laughs> it's always repeating the song of God, I guess. Just want to share it. Isn't, isn't that great? You were starting to withdraw and go within, and then it's almost like the spirit just reaches out and reaches you with the Beatles, and then it goes on and on. And it's 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 a big call, you know. It's just listen now to me, Paul, and do your job. <laughs> I will instruct you. It's lovely to be here. Thank you. Hi, David. <clears throat> I heard from you the uh, first time that uh, the Beatles uh, was um, inspired from the Holy Spirit. And I just thought, yes, that's the only explanation for, for this love and this uh, influence, uh, holy uh, generations né? and um, inspiration also. And um, I, I look at the uh, uh, internet, a lot of uh, YouTube um, things, and then I heard about a conspiration from a, 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 a theory, a th theory <laughs> that uh, the Beatles is uh, uh, from the evil or something like that. And, and I thought, just thought, oh God, that's uh, really crazy, uh, this kind of um, conspiration theory. Because can they not see that uh, that's a love in, in this uh, uh, message? And, uh, and now that's uh, from, uh, from this film, eh? and uh, it's only this uh, um, confirmation that's pure love. And uh, innocence, and uh, and the world would be a, a little poor without them. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah, thank you, Andre. That's isn't it obvious to us? We we watch, we go, we feel it. It's just so obvious because love is so felt. You know, you could just feel it. You know, coming through, and so. It's great that even though the Beatles seem to be a different generation, here comes a movie and, and it just brings it all back because those songs are so, you know, from our heart, we recognize those. And there's a lot of people that would come to them, even come to John Lennon and say, you wrote that song just for me. And he'd say, I don't, I don't think so, but they were sure. <laughs> that he had written that song just for them because it, it was so deep, like from inside them, they could recognize it. So I think that's what you're saying. You know, we know, it's despite crazy conspiracy theories and all the projections around it, yeah, it's, it's truly from the heart and it truly lit the world up and still is being used to light the world up. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, I'm Esther, and um, what I saw in the movie, what touched me very deep, uh, is the recognition of the focus on uh, the things that are not there, and like you want to be famous, you want to write the best song, and it doesn't work, it doesn't work, and he's looking at the life in the future and around him, away from himself, and actually the best life was already there was already there in the moment with her and and in the love that she had for him and the the things were so close already and i recognized that very much for my own life um i made that change in the last months 
of not looking at future and around and things that are not there, for all of a sudden I made the shift <coughs> inside and and to appreciate such small things that are so close <coughs> that are already there. And I'm super grateful for that process. And that's what I saw in the movie. And it's lovely to share. Thank you. That's so profound. It's all right here for us. And we can let it through right here and right now. We don't have to dream something up for the future. So thank you. Thank you for sharing that. That's huge. And also how how El, Ellie really loved him but encouraged him and supported him when he was ready to quit his music, you know, you know, that time when he remembered she just stopped the car. And she really seemed to intuitively know that he needed to express through the music. And then through it, it just it came to the greatest lesson of all that it's right there for us right now. It's not a something to achieve in the future or something to make a big project out of. It's just the simplest experience to be that present. Yeah. Thank you. That's w very wise. It also feels so so close, so close. It's like so in you. And therefore, in everything you touch, just around you, it's so close. Closer, it cannot be closer. That's really how I feel. Yeah, it's like that quote I mentioned at the beginning. In you is everything that is perfect, ready to radiate through you and out into the world. And sometimes it's kind of interesting because if you perceive yourself as as a human being, and you buy the lie that, that the ears receive sound from the world and go in and hit the eardrum and then it sends an impulse to your brain and you, you hear. And if you buy the lie that light comes in through the pupil and the, the image is reversed and then it sends an impulse to the brain and everything, that's all part of the lie that there's an external world happening to you when in fact the ears are like the speakers and the eyes are like the projectors and everything that is true and real and that love is, is inside, in so much inside and ready to radiate and extend and it can't be held back by the body or the world, because it's within us. And I like that line in the Course where Jesus says, the body is outside you, but it seems to surround you, shutting you off from others. And what he's talking about is, what does that mean? The body is outside you, but it seems to surround you. What is he talking about? Well, he says, you are the light and the body and the world is, is outside of you. It's really, there's really nothing outside of you, but it, it seems to surround you. But through extending the love and the light, you start to realize that you are not limited and never have been limited by the body or the world. But we have to get into that function and it's beautiful that you're bringing how close that function is. You know, like he used to say, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. A hand is very close. He was teaching 2,000 years ago how close this living kingdom is. And all we have to do is look for it and, and, and want it and desire it and it's, it comes flashing back into our awareness. So thank you. That's, it's very profound that it's so close. So very close. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Esther. Thank you. Okay. Ah. Wow.
Hello. Hello. Well, um, my prayer for this retreat is to let go of the belief that I'm a vulnerable body. And um, my ego has, has been telling me stories these days about, oh, you only had 11 hours of sleep the last two days. And, and stories like, you need to meditate, you need to turn back, and you cannot see a movie and... All these uh, inputs inputs will just make your sleep bad again and stuff like that. And it was really the answer to my prayer, because just uh, from the beginning of the movie when he sang yesterday, and it was just miracle after miracle, and I found myself in the biggest joy of my life towards the end. So yeah, <laughs> thank you. Yeah, we can't see it coming sometimes. Even when you had the ego hair, you're all lined up for a terrible night. <laughs> and then the joy just came rushing in and lifted you up. Yeah, thank you for sharing that. That's beautiful. <laughs> oh. Hi, David. Hi, Stephanie. Mm. I think what I wanted to say now is perhaps I, I said yes often but yes but no and I see and I feel this yes but no and um, but now I felt like I had to come here and to say yes And I want to remember this, yes. Mm. Yeah, that's ah, good. thank you. We're all a witness to that beautiful declaration. <laughs> that's it. That's it. I feel it. I feel it. Ah. Oh. Okay, well, thank you. That This has been our first full day. <laughs> wow. <laughs> We're just getting started. <laughs> yeah, thank you all so much for coming and participating in this, because, yeah, this is, it's precious to have these reminders about saying yes to spirit, opening to our function, willing to trust, willing to be shown, not having to know what the future looks like, be able to ride this moment, just ride it and be carried by it, and and go deeper and deeper into it. Yeah. And that's what is expanding our faith, you know. I remember Jesus uh, during the time of his resurrection where he seemed to come back and uh, he was with the apostles and they were kind of stunned uh, but once they were starting to get over being stunned it was it was Thomas who got the nickname Doubting Thomas who went up to Jesus and was t touching his hands and arms <laughs> where the holes were and Jesus said something like Blessed are those who, who have seen and believe. Far greater are blessed those who have not seen and believe. And that's the faith. We're deepening into that faith where instead of saying, show me the proof with the form, show me the proof with the evidence in the form, we're starting to really trust on the inside to show me, show me the way, you know, guide me, give me the instructions I need, give me the signs, give me the symbols, give me the hugs, give me the warm welcomes, show me the movies, let me hear the songs you would have me hear, but I will step back and let you lead the way. And it's nothing we were raised with, it's nothing in our past that taught us that. There's something within us that is rising up and feels it. We are, as they say, in the tractor beam of love and light. 
and we are getting beamed up. There's nothing that we can do about it, <laughs> thankfully, <laughs> and hallelujah. So, have a blessed night and have a good rest, and we'll see you tomorrow, fresh for another day. Yeah.